At last week's launch event in New York City, HTC and Verizon said they'd crafted the ultimate droid. Does the brand new droid DNA live up to that lofty assertion? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is our full review of the HTC Droid DNA. The Droid DNA's standout feature is, of course, its 1080p display, a first for the United States. But in most media, that spec has been overshadowing the beauty of the rest of the device. HTC said they designed this phone to resemble a muscle car, and that's apparent in its perforated, red-accented side panels, clean lines, and aggressive styling overall. As we've mentioned in some earlier comparison videos, it doesn't have a hint of phablet in its nature. This is very much a smartphone, and it feels like it in the hand. The weight is perfect, and the build is slim and clean, with a boat-shaped crescent design making it sit very nicely in the palm. The size does create a problem or two, notably in one-handed use. We like that HTC has gone taller without going wider, but that creates a real challenge in thumb-swiping the notification bar. Pressing the top-mounted power standby button also isn't the easiest of tasks, given its awkward positioning and almost non-existent physical feedback. We wish HTC had placed it off to the side. On the back is the typically understated HTC branding dead center of the non-removable back cover, above which is the prominent 8-megapixel camera lens with flash, as well as a nice surprise, a rear-mounted LED notification light so you don't miss out on notifications if you put your phone face down on a table. Down below, there's Verizon's 4G LTE branding, reminding us of the 1.5 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro humming along inside, and the Beats Audio logo above the speakerphone, which has its own dedicated amplifier. Back around front, the curved Gorilla Glass 2 of the phone's face is actually very beautiful. The edges are so smooth, they make the glass look a lot like a puddle of water about to spill over the edge, and it almost feels that way to a thumb as well. Down below the display are the three HTC capacitive buttons for home, back, and multitasking. Up above is the wide-angle 88-degree lens for the front-facing 2.1-megapixel camera, the earpiece, and the Verizon Wireless branding dead center. Powering on the display reveals the real crown jewel of this handset, the 5-inch 1080p Super LCD 3 panel delivering 440 ppi and some insane viewing angles. It's laminated, like on the older One X, so the graphics appear to float right on the surface of the glass, and HTC claims it's 50% brighter than the Galaxy S3's display. It's hard to tell on camera, but the display really is incredible. Once again, check our other videos for side-by-side -side display comparisons with the Galaxy Note 2 and the LG Optimus G. To our surprise, though science tells us we shouldn't be able to see much difference, this screen just takes it to a whole new level. In normal navigation, in video, and in reading ebooks, in, in every usage mode, it's absolutely beautiful. It's the best screen we've ever seen on a smartphone. What's running on that screen is Android Jelly Bean 4.1.1 with HTC Sense 4 Plus running on top. In the past, we weren't huge fans of the Sense layer because of its impact on Android's performance. Historically, it's been a very heavy UI. On the Droid DNA, though, Sense is very smooth. We're not sure whether we have the S4 Pro, Jelly Bean, or Sense optimizations to thank. It's probably a mix of all three, but whatever the reason, we're very happy. It's still possible to bog Sense down if you try. It's not as smooth as Naked Jelly Bean or even TouchWiz, but all but the most anal UI enthusiasts will find it very serviceable. Visually, Sense 4 Plus isn't all that different from the earlier 4.0. There's still a ton of widgets available, and the skin still retains that gray, somewhat understated look compared to the more cartoony TouchWiz. HTC has also built in new functionality to many of its stock apps, most prominently the gallery, which now allows you to group photos by event in addition to the standard album. You can even view your photos in map view if you want, which is a nice touch. The camera software features some nice customizations as well, including sightseeing mode, which lets you bypass the lock screen and jump right into the camera viewfinder if the camera was the last thing you were using when you locked the phone. Burst Shot is back, as well as the unified viewfinder, and there's some handy UI customizations to make using the new front-facing camera easier. In all, Sense 4 Plus is more of what we're used to from HTC. It just happens to run without a lot of lag on this hardware, which is a great thing. 
Lag was a big source of heartburn for us with earlier versions of Sense, and it's nice to see it fixed. Now all HTC needs to do is build in some of the handy utilities other companies have adopted, like the function toggles in the notification bar, which we miss dearly from our time with Samsung and LG devices. During our test period, the Droid DNA delivered solid performance in terms of day-to-day -day responsiveness, data speeds over LTE, voice clarity, and general utility. Most of the things you need a smartphone to do, the Droid DNA does very well, and of course it looks amazing on this display. Speed-wise, Verizon's network was a little inconsistent in the greater Boston area, but we averaged a very respectable 11 megabits down and almost 5 megabits up during our test period. Reception was good, both in cellular and Wi-Fi modes, and the software kept up with the connection speed, the stock browser rendering pages quite quickly and rendering and reflowing text beautifully. Gaming was predictably just fine. The full benchmark scores can be viewed in our full review at pocketnow.com, but they backed that performance up. Voice calls were clear and crisp, and the stretched body of the device made talking quite comfortable. We're not sure if the Beats speakerphone amplifier engages during voice calls, but the speaker delivered one of the loudest and clearest calling experiences we've had since our days with Nextel phones. We were frankly disappointed in the Droid DNA's camera quality. HTC told us at the launch event that the optics were the same as those in the One X, but that tuning had been improved on the software side. Well, we can confirm half that. The optics do look to be the same. Pictures in good lighting outdoors actually come out pretty nice, but put the device in mediocre lighting conditions, and that quality just evaporates. Jagged edges, washed-out color, a high susceptibility to flare and glare, it's not a great experience. Video is pretty solid, with excellent macro performance, though the audio is somewhat tinny and the white balance autocorrect timing is about average. We've definitely used worse smartphone cameras, but we were hoping for more, given the caliber of this device. On the other side of the equation, the front-facing camera, which I'm using to shoot this segment, delivers on its promise to bring a best-in-class experience. That may not be the highest bar to clear, but it's certainly nice to see a manufacturer taking this neglected feature seriously. Many folks expressed concern about a 2020 milliamp hour battery powering a 1080p display, and that's valid. The Droid DNA does better in this regard than we expected it to, but considering the battery isn't removable, power users unwilling to carry a spare charger will want to take care when considering the DNA. We were able to get a solid day and a half of usage out of the device, but that's with light use. The general rule is that the more time the screen spends powered on, the worse the battery life gets, and that's especially true for the DNA. It's a champ in standby, but the screen on time is a real drainer. With light to moderate use, you should expect the phone to get you through the day. Anything more than that, and you're going to want to carry a spare charger to replenish that embedded battery. Speaking of embedded components, the memory on the Droid DNA is limited to 16 gigabytes, and there's no expandability, so if you have plans to carry your entire music or movies library with you, this is not the device for you. But if you make use of online media options like Netflix and Spotify, or you don't otherwise need a lot of onboard storage, then you're in the clear. As usual, it all depends on your usage. So the Droid DNA isn't quite the ultimate smartphone its makers claim. Like all handhelds, it had to make its fair share of compromises to see the light of day. The limited storage and battery life will immediately disqualify it for some power users, but its 1080p display and beautiful hardware will make it nigh irresistible to others. If you can live with its limitations, this is a beautiful piece of technology that feels amazing in the hand, includes the best display ever on a mobile phone, and provides a solid software experience. Delivering on all those fronts while also pioneering the 1080p smartphone revolution can't have been easy, but HTC has done a solid job of it. We give the HTC Droid DNA an 8 out of 10. Folks, that's going to do it for our full review of the HTC Droid DNA for Verizon Wireless. For much more, read the full review at pocketnow.com. You can also listen to our podcast every week, the Pocket Now Weekly, where we discuss the Droid DNA and other Android, iOS, and Windows Phone smartphones. And be sure and check out our comparison videos between the Droid DNA and the Galaxy Note 2, the Galaxy S3 coming soon, and the Optimus G from LG. 
In the meantime, follow us on Twitter. Pocket Now Tweets is the official account. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Captain Two Phones. And throw us a thumbs up here on YouTube if you like the video. If you want to leave a comment, do so on the full review at pocketnow.com. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.